All right. Loud and clear from James Jefferson. Thanks, James uh, and Robert, everybody else. All right. So thanks. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying your day so far at the uh, Solid Professor Virtual Education Summit. Um, I'm pretty excited to be here when uh, Sarah from Solid Professor reached out a uh, couple of months ago and asked me if, uh, if I wanted to participate and if SolidWorks wanted to participate. It was a pretty easy uh, answer to say yes. We have a, a, a very long history working together with Solid Professor back to their early days. And especially from the certification standpoint, we've... Um, We've done quite a bit with them. Um, I do notice that James in the chat, he, I know him and I have worked together on a ton of material for certification over the years. And um, so we really appreciate the work that they've done. And so again, being here today uh, was was really a no brainer for us as uh, individuals and as as, uh, as a company. So again, I hope you guys are all having a good time today. I've been able to tune into a few sessions this morning uh, while tweaking slides and preparing for, for my session now. So hopefully we can get through quite a bit of information here. I don't have um, a whole lot of stuff, just about uh, 22, 23 or so slides, but um, uh, hopefully we should have plenty of time at the at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, um, I haven't always been no, uh, known as the certification guy. Um, and in fact, there's been uh, two people before me, Jeremy Lucchini who hired me, was the uh, one of the original certification guys. So um, uh, shout out to him. I don't think he's in today. He's probably busy at his job, but um, I, I had a career before SolidWorks, uh, one that I pretty much enjoyed and I loved um, doing what I did. And I'd like to joke around that that's um, back when I actually still did something for a living. I actually got to make stuff and uh, more so than just making stuff, but um, designing things and seeing uh, my idea come to fruition for, uh, for a company that we were working for. So um, the company that I left to come join SolidWorks was heavily focused on uh, optic or molds for plastic optical parts. So mainly sunglass lenses or um, semi-finished lenses for prescription sun or prescription eyewear, all kinds of things like that, even including the little thing in the, the laser mouses that redirects the laser down onto the desk to pick up the signal. Uh, we did a lot of um, stuff with the medical industry too. So for during the pretty much the 90s and the 2000s, the only kind of plastic work that was left in the United States in manufacturing especially was, um, was very complicated, high tolerance parts. All the... Um, all the cheap and easy stuff like frisbees and and balls or you know play balls stuff like that went overseas to China because we just couldn't afford to make it here anymore. So, um, but it was cool to see stuff like that that we could do um, uh, to do here and be able to see those things. And uh, with the diagnostic devices, that one device that you see on the screen there, where there's a uh, a hand holding the device, that was from a company that's still in existence down in San Diego, and they do they take drops of blood and they test for different things. And that was one of their first devices that allowed them to test to see if you actually had a stroke or not. And that um, what that did is that allowed them to quickly diagnose you within a matter of minutes. In fact, they finally got it down to about three minutes. So uh, essentially a paramedics or an ambulance can carry that device and on their way to the hospital, they could diagnose you um, whether they should treat you like you had a stroke or not when you got there, or if it was just a case of bad heartburn or something from, or maybe some ba bad Taco Bell or something. Um, obviously very uh, large financial implications from an insurance standpoint. Um, I saw replacement equipment, that little blue thing there, not to get, not to make you squirm or anything, but basically that's used. They slice open the, the skin over your eye and they inject a little new, um, a new, uh, lens in there. And so we built the mold for the little blue part and also for the little silicone lenses that they would stick in there. Um, we did a lot of work with SolidWorks, um, to redesign molds, especially for plastic parts or optical parts. They were just, the lenses were something that's been around for a long time. They're always molded the same way. And so we, uh, we were fortunate enough to kind of uh, really play around with the mold designs that had been around for 40, 50 years to, um, to, to revolutionize them, if you will, and to actually use some uh, technology in them to, to kind of correct some of the old ways of the past. Um, so this is what led to my passion for design. I mean, these are that one mold in the bottom right corner of the, the slide that you see there. That mold is still running today, and it has ran um, nearly 8 million shots out of it um, down in Orange County. So that means that this uh, basically produced over 32 million sunglass lenses. Um, and if you have a pair of Oakley sunglasses on your desk or in your car or in your house somewhere, chances are those, um, those lenses came out of a, a mold that I designed and the company built. Um, so a lot of complicated engineering stuff. So um, back in my day, as us old people like to say, um, we were told several things about, um, about degrees and how you were gonna, you're gonna succeed in life. And the, the typical saying was that um, if you wanted to be successful, you need a four-year degree. Uh, my, my high school counselor told me that 
you know, over and over and over again. Um, my parents, not so much. My neither my mom or dad went to college. My older brother, older sister, they didn't go either. Um, I actually did go to college. I went for about three semesters to a community college, and I wanted to be a police officer. And that was in the early '90s, and about about the time '92, '93 came around, when I started applying for police departments in California, the, um, the economy took a dive, and within uh, probably about a span of two weeks, I got emails or sorry, not emails, got letters from them. It predates emails. Got letters from them in the mail saying that all three departments were um, had frozen hiring because they didn't know when they were going to have budget to hire again. So that's how I kind of end up in the mold making trade with my dad, and I learned from there. Um, another anecdote that I like uh, to say is that uh, around that time I was getting to mold making. I was making pretty good money, okay money, and uh, somebody I was dating at the time told me that uh, after we broke up, of course, told me that I should really think about going back to school so I could uh, make some real money and make something of my life. Um, and a, a few years later, when that person graduated from college, I can guarantee you that I was making more money than that person. And they were saddled with um, uh, quite a bit of school debt at that time as well. Um, so you went to college, right? And now what? Um, this is a great quote from Mike Rowe from the Mike Rowe Works Foundation. Um, no relation to SolidWorks, really, because of the works. In fact, when Mike spoke at um, SolidWorks World some years back, he thought it was a conference about um, waste uh, management, given the, the SolidWorks logo. So anyway, he says America is lending money it doesn't have to kids who can't pay it back um, to train them for jobs that no longer exist. And that's nuts. And it really shows that we are just in a different time now. Um, school is expensive. Um, and when you look at who's going to school, uh, the people who are really hurt are people in low income areas. In fact, low from the research I did, low income areas uh, our people in low-income areas only comprise about 20% of students in undergraduate programs. And those are what are called like um, uh, just general choice schools. So they don't even, the, low, the numbers are much lower um, for like choice schools, like Ivy League and stuff like that. So it's um, not everybody's getting that opportunity. Um, in, 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 you know, including that, or in addition to that, uh, there's many people who didn't go to, to school. And a lot of people took um, a different route. So these um, these are pictures here of people who, um, you know, founders without degrees, or I like to call them unicorns. Okay, this is certainly is not the is not the norm. You know, these people went on to have very um, very tremendous careers and made tons of money. Um, especially if you look, probably Mark Zuckerberg, one of the most richest ones on there. Um, but they're unicorns in the sense of how much money they made. There's there are a lot of people out there that are successful that just didn't want to go to college, or maybe they didn't have the means to go to college. Um, so um, it's, it's, and it's different times. Again, this, you know, most of these people, if you look, they started in the, in the early 2000s um, uh, with the exception of a, a couple of those older guys there, but they went to, they went on to, to do great things. So a, a lot of people took different routes. Um, as I mentioned, um, one of those people that took a different route was me. When I, um, I remember in, 2007, 2008, when I was really close with people at SolidWorks and I wasn't working there yet, I um, I remember thinking to myself like how cool it would be to work there. I just thought it would be a really great job to have. And so in 2008, on uh, the summertime, as we're getting into the fall, I realized that the mold making trade was good for me. Uh, my dad had certainly been successful in it and been able to raise a family on it for, you know, now approaching probably somewhere of uh, 50, 60 years or so. Um, and it, it was pretty good, but it wasn't going to give me everything that I needed. And so I started talking with um, with somebody at SolidWorks, uh, Jeremy, who was writing the certification of the team. And he was actually helping me look for different uh, opportunities in the industry. There were somebody, a company that was looking for somebody with mold design uh, that didn't have a degree, but, you know, wanted to get out. So I almost ended up in Montreal, Canada, of all places. And uh, on the day I was sending him my resume, I noticed that um, somebody posted a link to some job openings at SolidWorks, and one of them was for the certification team. And when I mentioned it to him in my email, I meant I uh, with my resume. I told him, I said, "Man, this was this would be the cool, the perfect job for me." But this is one of those times where I really wish I had went to school so I could have that, so I could have an opportunity to apply. Um, he replied with about two minutes later, saying that if you want the job, it's yours. Um, you don't need a degree because my experience speaks, you know, sp speaks for itself. Um, and that's really essentially what I did. I let my skills uh, speak for themselves. I learned, you know, um, mechanical engineering skills and capabilities hands on. I, again, I was designing molds that were built to last for, you know, five, 10, 8 million cycles um, that were there to work. Um, I understood simulation, all that stuff. So I had learned um, 
by by doing instead of by uh, learning by theory. Uh, I did go on to um, to manage the team. So in 2015, I took over management of the team full time. And um, I didn't put this slide in here to brag about myself, but more or less just kind of show that it's it's a challenge for people like myself who are in industry um, that they don't have a degree that are kind of learning from that sense. Um, it's more or less to show that working with people and doing things the right way and having the right attitude and, and having those skills that you can learn uh, by doing can be successful. Um, We've averaged um, that well, averaged out about 22% growth um, each year. One of the most successful programs inside SolidWorks. So um, as industry changes and times get um, uh, more and more advanced and and learning is more and more available and, and people are learning things at younger ages, we, we hear from people in industry that um, challenge the status quo entirely. Um, so here's a really interesting quote from Elon Musk that was just basically a couple weeks ago. So I don't even, I don't care I don't care if you even graduated high school, okay? Now that's a pretty strong statement to say, and um, I don't think anybody's promoting the idea that we no longer require kids to go to high school or get a high school degree. And so that's why I put the other quote there where he says, he says, evidence of exceptional ability um, is what he's looking for. And if there's a track record of exceptional achievement, then it is likely that that will continue into the future. So what he's saying here basically is that if somebody can display those skills over and over again, there's a pretty good chance that they know what they're doing um, I remember when I went to work for the mold company as a designer, telling the owner when he hired me, or when he was asking to hire me, telling him that, um, well, I, I don't know how to design molds. He says, of course you do. You've been putting them together and taking them apart and building the parts for them for years. He says, and you know how to use SolidWorks. You just got to put the two together. And that was essentially it. Um, and so after that, every mold that I designed was, it just kind of worked. And it wasn't, um, at first it was, I thought, okay, it's just kind of um, luck. But after a while, you know, like when I go down to Oakley and visit friends now, when I see those molds running, I know that it was skill more than luck when I look at them still still running today. So we talk about skills based employment. Um, what are we talking about? So um, there's there's several things here that I put here. So you earn um, you learn by doing something instead of learning the theory and then applying it. So in, in school, um, you're taught, OK, this is how something how something works. OK, and in the book. It looks perfect, um, but that's not always true in real life. Um, and so, you the difference between the two is that you don't get the the opportunity to um, to look at, see, and test things. You know, a book can only a piece of paper and a, or a page in a book can only show you so much. But when you're down there standing in front of a molding machine, and this is what the the computer spits out as the process, um, is not always true. And so, you're always standing there tweaking little things to get stuff like that, uh, get that to work. Um, a certification um, basically exhibits you understand the basics of the tool um, and you really only need to learn how to apply that tool. So we tell people all the time, uh, potential employers and people getting certifications, that um, getting a certification in mechanical design or in SOLIDWORKS, it doesn't mean that you know everything there is to know about it, okay? Um, but what it does mean is that the, the person, when they walk in on day one, is they understand how to use that tool that you're using. In this case, it would be SOLIDWORKS. And then they only have to show that person what they use that tool to do. Okay. The same thing when I was, when I walked into day one as a mold designer, when the, when the owner told me, he says, you know what you're doing. Says, you just need to put it all together. And that was essentially it. I, sh I sat down, we fired up SOLIDWORKS and there was no need to spend a week training on SOLIDWORKS. We went right into mold design and hit the ground running. He didn't have to spend any extra resources on there. Uh, if you're employed, a certification can help you move up positions at work. Um, what's called the career ladder. Um, what's called the career ladder basically is, um, you know, if you're, you're in your job, okay, you're trying to compete with other people possibly to kind of move up and down or not down, but move up in the company by obtaining those, those additional certifications and skills that will kind of help prove to you, to your employer that you're interested in that work, that you're learning more along the way and that you want to keep growing in there. So that career ladder is uh, definitely a uh, part of it. Um, and then when looking for jobs, um, there's obviously we're at a time right now where there's a lot of people unemployed, but fortunately, especially manufacturing, there's a lot of jobs out there and the outlook is anything but negative. I mean, it's, um, a year from now, I think we'll see a, a totally different environment that we're living in. Um, and when it comes to manufacturing, um, it could, you know, if we get back to where we were at, um, and then start growing from there, it's just going to be incredible times. So certifications are like job openers. Um, one of the stories that I like to tell is about Disney ride engineering in Southern California, in Anaheim. Who doesn't like Disneyland, right? And who, who wouldn't, 
who would not love to go and design rides for Disneyland. Um, very good friends with the people there that uh, run the, into the ride engineering department. And the, the manager has told me several times, in fact, I used to have a job opening listing that I used to use in a uh, presentation, but it's it's pretty pretty old now, is that if somebody submits a resume with a SolidWorks certification, a CSWP on there, it guarantees them an interview. Um, and that's that's pretty big to get put out at the top of the stack, um, especially if you don't have a degree. Um, so again, we talk about changing times and, and, and how things are going, but is it really changing? Um, so last month, the president signed an executive order that changed the way that the federal government um, hires people. So up until now, it's always been based on degrees. Okay. Um, and so in other words, to get into a federal career or into a job, you had to have a degree that was associated with that, with that, um, with that job. Well, he changed that to make it, to move it from a degree based to skills based. All right. And this is a, it's a very, um, it's a very good move for a lot of reasons. Okay. First and foremost, it opens the doors for people from low income areas to, to basically escape poverty if they want to. All right. Again, thinking back to that, you know, 15 to 20% of people from low income areas that are only going to college. Now imagine if, if they're working like in a, in a hands-on job after high school for, you know, four or five years, they can go into the federal government. And, you know, the joke is that once you work for the federal government, you never get fired. Right. But they're really good, well-paying jobs, very secure. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity there. Okay. Um, how much opportunity? Um, so here in the U S the federal government is the, it's the largest employer in the country. Okay. It's actually the largest employer in the world. Now, I went up and looked up some numbers this morning, 9.1 million employees. That's how big the federal government is in the U S the next largest, um, uh, employer, um, is Walmart and in the world. Okay. In the world, it's 2.1 million employees in the U S they're only 1.5 million for Walmart. So you're talking about, you know, a, a, a much greater workforce, a workforce in the federal government. In fact, the federal government basically employs about 6% of the U.S. workforce. So again, they are, times are changing. This is going to open up the door for, um, for a multitude of people to pursue these jobs. Now, what this does, okay, when the government starts spending money or opens up opportunity, everything comes in behind it, okay? Um, private industry, everything, they want to start getting a piece of the pie, right? So when we talk about um, the federal investment in skills training, it's been in decline since the, basically since the start of the century back in 2001. Um, and finally now in 2019, it did level off. And there's um, expectations are that it will start to grow, um, especially once the economy starts to, to, uh, to get back on its feet. Um, by refocusing on, on skills versus, um, uh, versus degrees, it opens up the, the pool of, of people that the government can choose from to hire. And so people will want to be taking those, learning those skills because they know they can get into these jobs. Um, and on top of that, it's going to open up more federal grants and loans, okay, for, for companies that want to start doing training, okay, all the things that are going to come behind this, all right, it's all going to be skills based. And a lot of these skills are backed up by certifications, okay. Um, and then, um, of course, then the government is going to want to make sure they're going to do all these studies, right, to make sure that it's all working. So there's going to be lots of projects to fund all these studies on top of that. So um, the nice thing about skills-based um, programs and skills-based learning and certifications, it's not just limited to the federal government. A lot of companies are doing this as well, okay? Um, this is, you know, we talk about skills-based compensation programs at companies, all right? At DASO Systems, we have, they have a very good skills-based um, compensation program in place. Uh, early on as managers, or we were able to identify people who want to choose a, a path. They want to just be an employee until they retire, or maybe they want to go into management. And there's a clearly defined path to get into management. Um, and so once I was became manager, I've always loved managing people. It's always been just one of the things that I, I think is just fascinating to be able to help people to help develop, help people develop their careers, help them succeed, and then, but more importantly, to see them succeed. Um, there's nothing more rewarding to me to to see um, one of our guys on my team uh, compile an exam, get it tested, launch it, and then see people talking about it. And so um, this has been a long time tool of labor. Okay, if if anybody's ever been in the labor market, like with electricians or plumbers. Um, starting from the apprenticeship all the way up to journeyman. Okay, I have a, a really good longtime friend of mine, known him for over 20 years. He started off as a journeyman plumber. Um, I'm sorry, as an apprentice plumber, and worked his way up through um, to, to journeyman and leading crews and um, leading 
plumbing jobs on these, you know, multi 20, 30 story buildings in downtown LA. And now he works for the city of LA as a plumbing inspector. Okay. Um, again, never went to school. Guy probably easily makes over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, and it was all just from hands on learning on the job and all and having a skills based, um, um, uh, the career. The great thing about this is that, um, employees can choose the path. So, um, again, like at Dasso, we can choose to be a just employee or we can go into management. Now I'm not saying that I'm never going to be CEO. There's not really, I'm, but the path kind of exists if you wanted it to. And as we've seen, um, with our current CEO, John Paulo, he was the manager of R and D. Um, so a, a lot of our CEOs have come up through those ranks over the years. Uh, the companies developed the certificate. They also help develop the internal certifications, um, you know, to promote pay higher pay. We have, we have an entire internal certification program that's ran by our HR department um, to help people get through these things and to learn more about the company. Um, and then the other great thing is it it, it avoids what, what's called degree compartmentalization. All right. You have the people who are get like a, a um, you know, let's say a marketing degree. They always get stuck in marketing. Maybe they want to do something else. Maybe they want to go into product management. They want to go somewhere else. All these types of internal programs allow people to kind of move around. Okay. I'm, you know, mechanical engineering is my background, but I would say more or less nowadays I'm doing more, you know, data management or management style, style stuff. I'm not, I'm not doing too much engineering these days, in other words. And um, so it's, it helps to to have those types of things. Um, and a lot of companies are switching to digital badging now and these digital badges travel with you and they, they help uh, become part of um, industry recognized certifications. And so when we talk about um, industry recognized certifications, we, um, from the SOLIDWORKS standpoint, we, our program has been developing for quite a few years now. So we have, um, we introduced CSWP uh, way back in 1998 actually basically in like December of 1998. Um, and so we're talking well over 22 years now that the program has been in existence. Um, and today we're managing 21 certifications that are available to customers directly. Um, internally, we also manage uh, another subset of about 15 exams that are available only for our partners. So it's a rather large program um, from our customer side. It's very, very, very popular. I'm sure many of, the, the, um, many of you joining us today are from schools or institutions that are what we call an academic certification provider who are giving these certifications out to students. Um, in May and June, during um, during normal times, when those are the times that, um, sorry, in May and in December, when um, semesters are coming to an end is when we see our biggest, our biggest days of activity. And in May, I think last year, not this year, but last year in 2019, we were at one point, um, we, we, we would average about, about 1500 sessions in one day. Um, so basically, um, because there's, it's so popular. And so last year we, about once every three minutes, somebody launched one of our exams somewhere around the world. Um, and about every, once every seven minutes, somebody earned one of our certifications. Um, it's, um, it's grown tremendously. Um, and we're, we're quickly closing in on 500,000 or half a million certified users around the world. Um, so when we talk about who benefits from these certifications, we really like, it's, it's hard to pick the, the, um, the stories to share, um, cause there's so many of them. Um, John McLean, one of our CEOs back in the early days, used to talk about the emotional paycheck for SOLIDWORKS. And it really was, you know, hearing the success stories of customers doing great things with SOLIDWORKS. And we hear them all the time for certifications. Okay. And it really does get to the point where it's like, we have to pick and choose the, the incredible ones. And so we usually find some ways here um, to find some really unique ones that are kind of fun. This one here is from um, a student named uh, Jason Ladon. He's in South Florida. Um, and I'll just read the quotes from him. It says, I just saw, uh, I just saw one, how useful SOLIDWORKS is in the industry and how it can be applied in so many places. It just clicked with me and I enjoy learning the ins and outs of it and the different features. I just really got into it and never looked back. Okay. Um, we featured Jason um, on stage at SOLIDWORKS for one year. He was um, featured in the local newspaper. Um, and when he graduated high school, he had full scholarship offers to MIT and um, uh, Carnegie Mellon University. And on top of that, he had been contacted by several companies during the summers before he graduated um, to do some either contract work or intern uh, doing some SOLIDWORKS design work. This is Zachary Fitzgerald. Um, I just I just recently made contact with him a few months ago. Um, 
and his uh, his uh, his story was rather interesting. What caught me, and he says, having the CSWE mechanical design um, c- uh, simulation CAM certifications and many special exams offered by SolidWorks has opened up advanced projects. This is the great part here. This has allowed me to be a NASA subcontractor for a zero gravity mouse food dispenser, as well as design my own 3D mouse for SolidWorks files. Okay, I don't know about you or how many of us were in uh, the summertime between high school, grades in high school, uh, working as a contra- subcontract for NASA. Um, but this kid was. Uh, Lucas Krupe, he, uh, I met him a couple years ago. Um, early in my first semester of college, I was offered a summer internship as a mechanical engineer by the largest steel producer in the United States. It is notoriously difficult for a freshman to get internship offers, as many have not yet developed marketable skills. I'm certain that the faith this company had in the expert level exam to verify my solver skill set was a large part of why I got the offer, which I later accepted. Um, Lucas actually joined us at 3D Experience World earlier this year in Nashville, and um, got he out of all the people he wanted to meet, he wanted to meet Cliff, our podcast guy. Um, but he also got to just happen to be there the same day that Dean Kane was there. Dean Kamen was there. And, um, and so we got him backstage and got to meet him. It was one of his heroes. Okay. Um, so by the way, all three of these kids, they all are kids. I call them. They all achieved their CSWE in their teens. Um, Lucas was 16 when he did his, Jason was also 16 and, um, and Zachary was 15. Now this is not to say that these exams are easy. Okay. Um, you can ask any three of these guys, you know, how tough it was, and they will verify that it was tough. These, this is basically what skills-based and what certifications do for young people or industry-recognized certifications can do for young people. Now, all three of these guys, they will go to college, okay, because they have that opportunity. Um, Jason, he really didn't at the time. His, uh, he comes from a single-parent home. Um, his mom is actually the uh, secretary at the school, so he does have some benefits available to him, but not probably not enough to go to uh, Carnegie Mellon or to MIT, but having getting interested in mechanical engineering, um, having the, a teacher that he had that got him, in, that inspired him to go through these certifications and going through it, got him to those places. So who else benefits from um, solar certifications? Uh, several people. I To get these slides, I went on onto, um, onto Twitter and I just searched for the hashtag SOLIDWORK certified and multiple, exam- multiple examples of this come up. Um, we get, I get tagged in, in, in tweets, you know, almost every day it seems. And it's, again, it's, it's great to see these students learning at such a young age and opening doors for themselves. And it really all starts with the teacher that in the classroom that they're in. And so I know we have a lot of education, educators that are joining us today. Um, and so I thank you guys for, for helping to, uh, to get these, these young people on the, on, on the path. But it's not just young people as well. Um, the, the one tweet there in the middle from Elite Moss, Elise Moss, she's, uh, I know her very well. She's at, uh, she's now retired. Uh, congrats, Elise. If you're on, I'm not sure if you're joining us this time or not. Uh, hopefully not because she's in retirement. But um, uh, she used certification to advance her career path. And we see that a lot in, in commercial as well. So do um, industry-based certifications and, and skills-based jobs, do they pay well? Um, I, you know, I went and pulled a couple of stats from um, ZipRecruiter and Indeed.com. And, you know, by all intents and purposes, they do. Um, this is this is in the U.S. here. Anywhere the average is about fifty-four thousand a year, um, but you can see the scales are from nineteen to one hundred seven thousand dollars a year. So they certainly do um, pay. Um, I know several people in SolidWorks jobs that are, to are uh, without degrees that are making really good money. Um, the guys at Oakley, two of the guys that I, uh, I know there, neither of them had degrees, um, and they're managing the the tool departments there. One just left, and now he's. Uh, he just moved up to Northern California, and he's um, joining Apple to help run their their plastics division up there. So, what proof do I offer? Well, luckily, our good friends uh, Rudy and Rustin, who were on um, uh, the hour before me doing their talk, they did a sur- uh, survey a few years back um, about certifications, um, and these are just some basic wrap ups of some of the results they found. Um, when they asked the people, "Is, is SolidWorks a certification valuable?" eighty two percent yes said yes. Um, for respondents that indicated SolidWorks certification was valuable during the hire, hiring process, 98% said that that certification was valuable during the hiring process. Again, the Disney Ride Engineering example that I used that talked about um, hiring people or interviewing people that have a certification. Um, it doesn't. It's not a lot of effort. It doesn't take a whole lot. Not certainly not four years of school, but it helped them get into the into uh, into a job. Um, respondents that indicated a SOLIDWORKS certification is valuable to engineering students, 94%. Um, I don't think, I don't see how having a, a certification can hurt a student. Um, it just doesn't seem like it would be possible. 
um, again, you're teaching, they're learning how they understand how to use a tool. Um, and then, then they can use that, that knowledge to apply it to the company and the job that they go to. Um, now I certainly don't want to talk anybody out of college. Um, that's, you know, I don't, um, I don't make any money by, you know, colleges not hiring or uh, not selecting people. And if somebody has a means to go to college, I certainly, I certainly encourage them to do so if that's the path that they want to. Um, there are other options though. Um, U.S. Section 127 of the IRS code allows for companies to provide up to about $5,200 a year in, um, in training for, for, um, for their employees. Um, so to do like continuing education or to uh, your, allow your company to pay you to, um, to go to, to, to college, okay? Um, at Dasso Systems, we can do this. We can take um, classes each year as long as we spend underneath $1,520. That's tax deductible income that the, that the company can write off. Right. So they provide you, they reimburse you. And then the company deducts that, um, that amount. And so it's, it's tax free income basically for you. A lot of companies can do this. I have a, my neighbor, um, spent three years and went through, um, uh, uh a school to get his bachelor's degree and didn't pay a penny. His company covered all of it. Um, so these are company provided continuing education benefits. A lot of companies will pay you for some will pay for time off to, to go to classes. Most people are doing night school. Um, but, um, you know, in, in these, some of these professional jobs, when you have time during the day, especially work from home, you can kind of exchange some time during the day for some time at night um, and all that stuff. So um, there's opportunities if you still don't go to college that you can go back. You know, I've dreamed about it for a few years now, but um, probably just getting a little bit too old to go back to school. Um, for the educators that are on the call with us today, uh, talking about um, you know some some benefits for you. So check the, your provider status. If you're teaching SolidWorks and you're on subscription, you have a minimum number of seats. I believe it's around 35 or 60, something like that. I won't don't quote me on either one of those, but it's somewhere around there. Um, you can sign up to be an, a certification education provider, and what that allows you to do is that allows you to provide all of our exams, except uh, except the, the expert level exams for free to your students. So basically for every seat that you have, you get one, um, you get um, a set of um, uh, certifications for that for that that seat. Uh, and it allows you to, again, proctor those things there. Now, during this, what I like to call the uh, temporary normal, I, uh, I refuse to believe this is the new normal because I think we'll go back to how things were. In this temporary normal, we're allowing, um, we're allowing teacher, we're allowing parents and guardians to be the stand-in proctor. So if you want to be able to administer those exams and you normally would do it in a classroom setting, you can hand over that power to the, the parent or guardian and just ask them to watch the student while they take the exam to be in the same room to make sure the kid's not on YouTube or on, you know, opening up some other files, you know, to, to kind of to help cheat on an exam. Um, if you're not in the provider program, um, as mentioned by Marie Planchard this morning in her opening keynote, is that we're providing the data manufacturing sustainable design exams for free. So you can see how that program, that process works. The link here, um, solidworks.com forward slash academic certification provider application. That's where you go to sign up and you just go in, you fill out, they just verify your status. And if you meet all the qualifications, they send you all the information. And so just a rather simple process to get set up and to go through. Uh, we talk about um, let's so I get how to get access for exams for free. So I've been in the I watched the keynote this morning. I was in a couple of the sessions this morning, watching some of the chat and um, a lot of questions about how do we get exams for free. This is probably our number one question that we're asked in our in our support inbox as well. Um, for students, ask your teacher if your school is a provider. That's a certification provider. That is the number one way to get um, to get access to free certifications. And so um, at that point hopefully the school is there. If they're not, ask them to kind of to see if they can apply. For teachers, if you're a certification provider, you can provide it just as I described in that previous slide. Co uh, commercial customers, if we have any on today, if as long as they're on subscription, they get a free, they get access to free exams as well. Um, and that's available through that subscram subscription exam offer link. Um, it's allworks.com as well. Um, for none of the above, I know we have some people from around the world that are tuning in today. Um, from some different countries around the world that seem to kind of follow me around through these events sometimes. Um, for you guys there, um, the, you just got to watch the watch online, some on the forums, on blogs, Reddit, Twitter, um, on my Twitter for special offers. We just got done running a, a promotion on my SolidWorks where to help um, some people that were, you know, affected by stay at home orders or work from home orders. Uh, we had you, as long as you went through the CSWA training on my SolidWorks, we uh, allowed you to take the CSWA exam for free for one time. Uh, we don't give away a lot of exams for free. Um, um, 
aside from these options here. And the thing is, the reason is that we want to maintain the value these certifications hold in the industry. Uh, we can, you know, I have a goal, we have a goal for certifications each year that I've constantly always told my boss that at the end of the year, either we're going to meet it or we're not, we're going to be very close. Um, and luckily he doesn't let it affect my rating for the year because we don't want to get into a game where if we come down to December and we're only, we're going to be a few hundred shy of the goal. Um, I don't want to do, I don't want to just give away a bunch of certifications. I don't want to tell somebody, well, okay, you, you got, you scored 30%, but we'll go ahead and we'll pass you because you kind of look at your, what you're doing. We want these certifications to maintain. So I always tell them that if we don't hit the number and we're close is just as good to me um, as, you know, exceeding the number um, because the value is there. So um, again, there's, you know, these things are difficult to get. They're hard to get. Um, they are available and means that we want to, but we want you guys to, to earn them. And then we want them to have that value when you, when you take them in and you show them to somebody. So uh, to wrap up, um, just a, a couple things here, twitter.com slash Mike Puckett. Um, I was one of the early adopters of Twitter back in the day that I actually got my name. Um, I was, you know, in the first couple of months that they, when they launched it, um, everything on there is all hundred percent SOLIDWORKS and CAD industry related. Um, it is not nothing personal on there at all. It just has to do with business. I know Twitter could be a little, um, volatile from time to time, but, um, I tend to only follow people who are in the industry and, um, and tend to just kind of retweet or talk about stuff that's that's focused on the industry as well, because I still feel it's a valuable lesson to or a valuable platform to kind of distribute information. It's also a great place to hear about when we have cer uh, certain offers. Um, if we're going to promote something, that's usually the first place that I put it on there. Flowers.com slash certification is where you can go and to see our entire catalog of um, exams that we offer. Um, it's up to date and live all the time. Uh, we just relaunched the website about two months ago. Um, so it all it has an all new look. It doesn't look like it's a 1995 website anymore. It's, it's nice and modern. Um, and there's a link to pr purchase the exams directly from um, from the web pages there. Um, and also for everybody that attended, so look for your free exam voucher in your inbox sometime this week. Um, so all professor will be sending out an email it's wrapping up the conference and included in there will be um, a unique voucher code to you. That'll be unique to you. And that will have instructions on how you can redeem it and what it's redeemable for. Um, and then one last thing is, um, if you want to join me on August 19th on SolidWorks Live, um, I don't know if, if you guys have not tuned into this series that we started offering um, back in March or so. Um, it actually kind of came off as a, a spinoff from 3D Experience World. We've been doing these really great uh, live sessions um, once a month or twice a month on there with some really great content. Um, I found myself canceling meetings just so I can dial or I can dial in and watch these because there's just some really great content that's on there. And um, in the chat, one of the questions that always seem to come up is um, is about SolidWorks certification. So they finally broke down and asked me if I wanted to do SolidWorks Live. And uh, I was, I'm excited that they gave me the opportunity and I jumped at the chance. So um, August 19th at 8 a.m. Pacific Coast time uh, is when we're going to do it. So we're going to talk about everything SolidWorks that there is. I'm um, going to announce three new exams that are launching um, after that session. And I don't know, we might do something kind of as a, um, might, get, might do some giveaways. Um, on that broadcast as well. So we'll see what we can do. So I would encourage you to tune in. Um, with that, I'm. that's pretty much all I have. And um, we're about four or five minutes early. And I just, so we'll kick it over to the Q&A. And um, I'm basically going to admit that I'm not sure how we're going to get the questions here. I'm hoping that somebody from Saul Professor is going to tune in and, um, and be the voice here inside my ear. But... Um, if not, I can go over here into my panel and I can see um, if there are some questions. So it looks like there was some that were answered and maybe there's op two open questions. So I see one from James that says, um, what's the best way to posture position? The fact that you have a certification so that employers will see it and believe it indicates a strong skill set. Um, so the best way to, to position it is basically there's a couple of ways you can put it on your resume and just and put the, the fact on there, the fact you have it on there. Every certification that gets issued also has a QR code on it. So what I would suggest is just copy and pasting that QR code onto your resume, especially if it's a digital resume. The hiring manager, um, a QR code, everybody just kind of wants to go see what it is, right? Um, so they might grab their phone, scan the QR code, and then off it'll go to um, uh, to to the site that will verify and it's a live verification of your certification and it shows that it's still valid 
Um, as far as like the skill sets and everything else, I would basically just point to, you could also link to the, um, the certification pages that you have. Um, and that talks about what the skills are in there. And then during the interview process, definitely it's, it's a, um, it's beneficial to, to have that, um, to have that discussion with them. And if they don't bring it up, you know, you could, you should bring it up, bring it up and tell and, and say, you know, did you want to talk about my certifications that I have, um, you know, talk about them and make sure they know. Um, so Maddie asked, uh, what are your recommendations for getting students prepared for taking a certification exam? Um, basically anything that's in the, um, on the exam listing, it's on its, on its page, uh, you should cover. We have a lot of prep content from the EDU team that talks about, um, you know, how to prepare from there. There's a lot of great stuff on my solidworks.com that can go on, on there, but basically the topics that are listed for an exam are what we tell people to be prepared for to encounter in the exams. Um, the more difficult ones are going to have, are going to be more difficult, obviously, and the less difficult ones are going to be a little bit easier to pass. Um, but they're all basically the topics that are listed on there are, are the ones to look for. Um, looks, let's see. Um, so John just asked in the chat, are these only SOLIDWORKS certifications or other certs for sheet metal, welding, et cetera? So uh, we have, we basically, we start off with CSWP, which was sol certified SOLIDWORKS professional. So the, the level was professional and it basically had to do with mechanical design. So the basics of SOLIDWORKS. And then some years later, we introduced an associate level that also de dealt with mechanical design. And then when we, um, when we went to, start to do breakout sessions or breakout um, exams, what we did is we started going into uh, different areas. So we we started with um, sheet metal and then drawings. Um, sorry, I'm looking, I'm scrolling through the site over here. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sheet metal drawings, well mints, um, uh, mold making, and uh, I think I forgot one. But these were, these five topics were kind of meant to be um, like broken out segments. So we talk about something like with sheet metal. There are very specific terms in the exam that are to that are dedicated to the sheet metal industry. Things as such as like um, bend radiuses, um, uh, you know, part thickness, all this stuff that only people in sheet metal industry would would understand. And so that kind of became our first ever like what we call industry based exam that was kind of focused at that. So if you don't have like knowledge of sheet metal, it's going to be tough to kind of pass that exam. Um, the second one that we did was mold making. Now, when we when we first brought out this exam, it was called mold tools. Um, I remember like one of the first days when I joined SolidWorks, obviously I came from the mold industry and my boss said, well, I'd like you to write a, an exam on the mold tools. And I said, well, I said not to, you know, hate on the company or to, you know, just dis disparage what it does, but people in mold making don't use mold tools um, unless they're doing Frisbees and stuff like that. So we found a way to do it. And for years it was just, it, it became like the easiest of the advanced topic exam. So a couple of years ago when I hired somebody new that um, also came from the mold industry, um, we decided to redo this. And so now the mold making exam, we, in, in fact, we renamed it from mold tools to mold making is again, just like, is also like um, the sheet metal exam. There are very industry specific terms and uh, models that are used in there that don't, that if you don't have an understanding of mold making, won't, you won't be able to pass it. So for example, one of the exam, one of the questions is we give you uh, an assembly that you download and it's, um, it's an X plate design um, mold with a, with a, a, a movable A plate. Okay. Uh, not too many people on this call may understand what that means. Okay. But somebody in the mold industry does, and we ask you, okay, how thing, how, what's the max opening of this mold? And for that, there's, there's bolts that hold the two paths, the two halves of the mold together so that when the machine opens, it pulls the other side and it's all very mechanical. And if you don't understand how it works, you're basically going to shear off some bolts when you open that mold for the first time. And so that's a, it's a very common thing in mold making. So we, um, that's another industry based, um, exam for that. And so we'll continue to look at that, especially as 3d experience works kind of, um, comes on scene is um, everything is basically kind of industry based. And so we'll look at things like that as well to kind of focus on these things. But we try to use as much industry terminology as we can uh, for people that go into those industries. Uh, let's see, Derek asked, can uh, speak to the differences between the old SOLIDWORKS certifications and the new 3D experience certifications. So right now the um, the 3D experience certifications, they are, they're delivered in the same way that the, 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 the old, um, SolveWorks certifications are are delivered. Um, I do love to see that people are thinking that in, in that way a little bit. Um, right now, they're just they're what we call the explorer levels. Um, 
And so we're actually um, retiring the, the associate level. Um, and uh, we're still going to use it for the existing exams, of course. But um, these explorer levels are just kind of like knowledge. Um, you can go through some training, through some e-learning, and you get an understanding of how the product works. And it's just kind of like an entry level. Um, by the end of the year, we'll have some announcements about um, what we're going to do for hands-on um, in, in terms of that. And at that point, um, that's still six or so months, five months from now. How we deliver it will still be similar. The, the goal is because since obviously with a hands-on exam and people using 3D experience on anything from a Mac like I'm using here in front of me uh, to a PC or a Chromebook, uh, basically using 3D experience in the browser, um, we have to get away from our Windows-based client that we have now. And so the goal is is to get is to do that. So in fact, we've we beta tested our first um, browser-based exams back at 3D Experience World in New Orleans or uh, in um, uh, New Orleans um, in Tennessee earlier this year. Um, so the technology is there, and we're delivering exams today to resellers um, with that um, with that uh, in that with that process. So um, basically, the biggest change you're going to see is that it's going to be um, delivered in a browser, and this um, it's been a challenge for us, but it um, it has opened up so many doors for us in terms of what we can deliver separately from what we haven't been able to deliver in the past. So um, we're excited about uh, the opportunities. That, that, pro that provides us. So um, again, it also, it'll be featured on the 3D Experience platform. Um, ideally, you'll go there, you'll log in, and everything will be done through there. So that's that's pretty much our goal um, in terms of the differences. Um, so with that, I don't think I see any more questions um, in the Q&A or in the chat. Um, unless anybody has any more questions, they can drop in. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, we can probably wrap up early and everyone can head off to their, their session. Their, I guess lunch is coming up next or, or whatever is coming up next in another session. Um, so again, um, thank you for joining uh, joining me here today. And, and thank you again for um, for joining everyone here at the, uh, at the, the conference uh, today. We had um, kind of hoped that this would be something that we could have done um, in person, uh, maybe next year or something like that. Who knows? Uh, that's a great thing about the team at, at Solid Professor. They uh, are a bunch of young, energetic people that think outside the box and certainly are doing things differently than than a lot of a lot of companies. So um, I've I've enjoyed everything I've seen today, and hopefully you guys did as well. Again, if you have any information or any other questions, you can hit me up on Twitter. There, um, certification at SolidWorks.com is another way to get a hold of us um, and my team if you have any questions about SolidWorks in general. So. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off and stop the broadcast and we'll allow you guys to, um, to head out. So uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.